Especially as well. Oh, Paolo! Fucking Giza, fresh up on that. Come on, say, dude. Hey everyone, um, I'm super happy today because I'm here with a, a good friend of mine, Lloyd Bishop, who I've known since I took his bar mitzvah photos at the tender age of 13. Yeah. Um, one of my first jobs in photography um, didn't do a great job. It, it was definitely uh, the early days of Mark Mann <laughs> photography. We've got to start somewhere. I did. I, start, I started there. It was a lot of fun. Did I get paid? I, I hope so. Did I? <laughs> Maybe I should speak to my parents, you know. <laughs> You should probably not have got paid for that. <laughs> um, but this is another episode in our uh, series about full-time photography jobs. And Lloyd has an incredibly interesting job as a photographer of uh, another one, which I'm kind of envious of, because he just gets to do great stuff. Um, so what's your job? I'm currently the staff photographer for Late Night with Seth Myers. Cool. It's a... Uh, it's a fun place to be. So what does that mean? You go there every day and take photos? Yeah, pretty much. I um, So we shoot the shows Monday to Thursdays right. and they need shots for press, publicity, whatever's going on. If we have any pre-tapes for the show, I'll go and shoot them beforehand. And yeah, so the show starts, we have guests. I shoot Seth backstage as he meets the guests. Right. Um, it's more of like an archival kind of behind the scenes stuff. Right. And then during the show, I shoot Seth doing his monologue. I shoot Seth talking to the guests, the band, any musical guests. And then those images are put out on Getty, on NBC's Media Village, and it's used for press and publicity. So you're actually TV. shooting live. Yeah, yeah, we're shooting. So there's five, I'm working on five cameras. I've got an earpiece with the director so I can know which camera he's cutting to. So you can go to the other camera. So I'll just stay out. If there's going to be a movement, I know. And, I, you know, I've worked with these guys right. long enough. I know the rhythm. I know the rhythm it's of the intense. show. It's intense. It is, and it, but it's like anything. You know, what we when we do our jobs every day, when you're in, behind your camera and I'm behind my, it's, you're in your, your space. It's your, right. I'm very comfortable. But then you do it, and at the end of the day, you're, you're, we're professionals. We, we know what we're doing. We've got the understanding. You, 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 we you, 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 you're you're a professional. But it's, um, I learned everything from Mark, so <laughs> wherever I know it came from him. So one of the things that I know people really want to know about this is how do you get a job like that? It's a good, it's a great question. I mean, there's no answer. There's no, like, stepping formula. stone. There's no formula to get where you're going. I mean, I assisted you, I assisted other photographers, I learned a lot, and I never went looking for this job. I had shot on TV commercials as like BTS, behind yeah. the scenes, I'd been on tour with musicians. And Can I just stop you for a second? Um, Lloyd just said he's been on tour with musicians. <laughs> who, are we, <laughs> who are you on tour so with? I was very, again, luckily enough, I went on tour with Paul McCartney <laughs> for a few. <laughs> But I mean, look, this is, it's not. <laughs> he went on tour with Paul McCartney. Oh, Who yeah. does that in I, life? I, I, I mean, come on. That was a good moment. So listen, and, and just saying that, you're saying luck, you're saying this, you're saying that, but when you were put in that position, you went out and achieved look, it, that. I'm you, not saying it's luck that I, look, there's no, like I said before, there's no formula to, to get to this point. You do jobs, you meet people, people like your work and they speak to other people. One person from this company knows someone at this company. Oh, this person's hiring a photographer from McCartney's tour. Oh, we heard his name, let's speak to him. And you know, it's all... But Lloyd, the bottom line is you have to do the work. You have to get the work. Yeah. That, that's I'm... what I'm saying. You can have lucky breaks or you can get an introduction. Oh, you've always got to do the work. You, you've you... got to have the, you know, you've got to be able to be put into a, a situation right. and not bottle it. Working in this environment of late night and in TV and having the privilege of having the chance to photograph all these people. When we, for instance, with these shots, we, um, it was the build up to the 2020 election and we were going to have all the Democratic candidates come on the show. And we had them all apart from uh, Joe Biden, unfortunately. He won, right? I think so, right? Not sure. Um, we'll look into it. No. <laughs> um, next, our green room uh, at the studio at Rockefeller, there's a tiny kitchen that's probably maybe like six times the size of this cart. Right. Twice across and three, very small. So I set up a backdrop, I set up a backlight and one key light, and you have 30 seconds max. 
They don't want to be there. But I know this but, is what I'm saying. Most of the time, you, you've got it, to get something out of them. And again, something I learned from you is not all the time, and I'm not going to generalize, but the best shots, the realest natural shots, you're going to come within the first 30 seconds to a minute. Bernie was great. I got six frames with Bernie. He goes, <laughs> okay, we're good, we're done. And he just stood up and walked out. Wow. And it was great, but that's part See, of like, working with the, what you get. I let's think. look at some of your pictures. Uh, so these right. are not actually, these are a couple of the other kit portraits I shot in the kitchen. These were um, the, the Henry Winkler. You shot the fawns, the fawns in the kitchen. You know, right? He's in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah, tell this me was, about this. Oh, I mean, I mean, no Galher. I know, tell me about that. So he, in fact, this that is might, just so he was on the show and again we have guests and it's there was no project behind this it's just no gallagher i'm like i gotta ask for a portrait so i i submitted my request to the talent department they submitted the request submit it in writing. <laughs> so i asked the talent department this they, they asked the the management or whoever he's with and they're like sure and then you never even though they say yes until they're there on the day oh absolutely you don't know if they're like yeah. you know what let's not do it and you're like sure no problem or you're like great let's do it so you've got to be ready and you've got to be ready to be let down as well because you don't know how these things go so he walked in and he goes he, he heard the accent he goes where are you from i'm like glasgow he goes oh my wife's right, from edge i'm like i'm sorry you can't win them all and then but i just kept going so straight away he just burst out laughing and i had him for like the minute that i needed and that, him that's for. all you needed I, Another project you do, which is your own thing, but you're involving your work, is you, you've done the project on drummers, which I absolutely love. Yeah, the drummers. Like, because drummers are like the, the guy in the band that nobody cares about. Well, the, and they're the ones, the most important ones in the band. <laughs> right, but you've done this thing as well. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask the drummer. Singer won't do it, but no. the fucking drummer will. We've got John Theodore from uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Mistake? No, all in camera. <laughs> Mistake? No, I'll, I, I'll talk you through the process. Okay, let's hear this. Because <laughs> so, um, that looks like a happy accident no, to me, no, mate. Uh, <laughs> good, good, good. And there's no pressure on these because it's They're not, not like NBC are going to put no. them out. So this is this is just this for you me. can do whatever really you want. It's like giving want. me a bit of creativity that once a week I'm like, all right, I'm doing a portrait. Let's. What kind of lighting am I going to do? What's going to be interesting? What kind of person is this? So at this point, I was working in a very tiny closet. Even smaller than the kitchen, I swear to God, at Rockefeller. It was a tiny, it's now filled with filing cabinets. It's Harry Potter photographer it was here. tiny space, and so I had two sets of, I had the key light, and then I had a secondary key, which was slightly different exposed, and then I think a different light on the background. And the trick was... Two lights in a closet, that's <laughs> magic. <laughs> I'm sure there's definitely a joke there, right? <laughs> there's... Um, <laughs> The trick was I was doing double exposure in camera, right. but then the different light setups were on different channels of the wizard. So one channel one on the wizard, I'd shoot the <laughs> channel. There'd be a couple of lights on channel one, I get it. and then I'd shoot the first frame, and then sh switch to channel two, and then the second sets of lights will shoot on the second frame. Oh, this Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden, <laughs> classic. Well, that's pretty. A lot like, of these are just trial I, and error. I like there's, that. No, there's no client breathing over my shoulder saying, I want this, I want that. This is me going in and going, I'm going to play with this today. And then obviously a, a firm favourite of ours, Paolo Nettini. Not a drummer, but... Not a drummer. This was before... Great portrait. This was before it all became drummers. He was, again, a Scottish musician. He was coming on the show. I had shot one or two already in this closet. <laughs> it was the photo closet. And I'd shot one or two portraits in there, and I'm like, the music people were really great. I'm like, let's ask. All they can say is no. I and especially we asked, like, oh, Paolo. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Fucking geezer. He fish was up great. On he, that. Come he, in, he, he was a bit shocked when he walked in and he heard me talking. He was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like we had um, Brian Cox on. Again, I'm a big fan Ooh, of Succession. Yeah. And so we had Brian Cox on in December. And for Christmas at work, someone had given me some Tunnox tea cakes. Oh, as you, you didn't do. pull out the Tonic <laughs> tea cakes, did you? So obviously, you didn't. it was a box of six. I know you did. Box of six. And I'm How like, many well, are you going to give away? I, I had five of them. I kept one right. for Brian Cox coming on the show. Right. So I came, he came on and he's not been on for us. So I didn't have any prints or photos to give him. So I go, they usually give in the, dre the green room, the dressing room, you know, your plate with your snacks and your... Yeah, your rider. Your, yeah, well, it's just given to you, your yeah. bits and pieces. So he comes in. And then I knock on the door, I go in and go, 
sure you'll, their snacks are fine for you, but I thought you'd like something a bit more quality. And I gave him the tannins. And he looks at me and his face literally lit up and he goes, but then he doubled, he goes, it's not the coconut one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about this. And I, I think we've probably talked about it in the past, right? But just for... Have it on record. Have it on record. <laughs> How much do you think the Scottish thing has helped influence or hindered your career, the Glasgow thing, being, you know, growing I mean, up in Glasgow? I don't think it's hindered it in any way. I think, that's, I think we both know that's not the case. Being Scottish, I mean, I think you're not going to meet a Scotsman that's not proud to be Scottish. Right. But also, Glasgow, I don't think it matters where in Scotland, I think Scottish people are very friendly, very chatty, you know. You'll chat to anyone and in our line of work, that's really important. No matter how much you're shitting it inside, you've got to talk to someone. You've got to have that chat flowing during a shoot. Some days it comes much easier. But we grew up with but everything is shite. And <laughs> anything that you tried to do, oh, so, yes. you're just completely <laughs> shot down. Like, right. what's that shit? It's <laughs> like crap. <laughs> oh, fact, but, like you go back to Glasgow, it's like, oh, big shot. And then you come to, you go to Glasgow, you sound so American. And then you come to New, you come back to New York, you like, sound so Scottish. I'm like, I can't win. Anthony Bourdain and this Scottish comedian, and they were telling this story, and in Glasgow, it's, you know, you know, if some usually someone dies, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. It just goes. In Glasgow, the retort is, oh, it's how someone you die goes, what was his shoe size? <laughs> <laughs> it's like straight away you're trying to lighten that mood. And I think, and it's very true, and I love that, and it's very true of the Scots thing, you know. Mm. you just got to chat, you got to kind of, bit of banter. Yeah. Can we finish up on a picture that I absolutely love? <laughs> oh, this one. I mean, it's funny, this is, I am... Um, before the, I had this looks like a film still from like Sinatra <laughs> or Dino. I mean, look, Sinatra, it's Dino, just, it's, Mike, Michaels, like it's all in the same um, spectrum of. So this picture was used for the Time 100 when Lauren was in it. And to be asked to use this picture for that was like, yeah, oh, major. it's just huge major. as a photographer. To, and so, and also Lauren Michaels, who I wouldn't have a job if it really wasn't for him. It's Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyers, doing stuff for SNL. So much of the comedy in our world that we're aware of today has come from this guy. Right. Being Scottish, we didn't have late night growing up. We knew, maybe knew of Letterman, but right. I didn't know about SNL or late no, night I, or any yeah. of that growing up. Come to America and I realized the history of it. So straight away when I started at Fallon, I said, I want to create this archive of all the behind the scenes images and every week I do, it's called a weekly select. And it's all the behind the scenes images I've picked from that week from staff at their desks or rehearsals, because those are the moments when we look back in 50, 60 years, it's not just the celebrities, but it's the people that made these shows happen that are so important to the history of it. So Lloyd, you are incredibly prolific and you seem to be incredibly creatively satisfied with what you're doing and still having that drive to do that and that's what i think being a photographer is and you really you really do that every day and hats off sir thank you man it's been great it's good to see you you too um thanks so much for watching check out this guy's work honestly it, it's it's wonderful um do the like and subscribe thing so lloyd can buy his family dinner and uh we'll see you next time bye take care